Looking for a suburb to call home? Want to buy some real estate or rent in a metro area? If so, keep watching. Today we're looking at some of the surprisingly best suburbs in the United States. The reason I say surprisingly is because these suburbs are in or near cities that wouldn't be considered the best the United States has to offer, and in a few cases I'm being very kind with that description. These are diamonds in the rough. People have been fleeing the cities for the suburbs since after World War II. In the last few years, we've seen a shift away from both both living downtown and the suburbs to small town America. That doesn't mean the suburbs have lost their appeal to everyone. Some people, for whatever reason, still need to or just want to live near a metro area. If you're one of those people, this video's for you. And stay to the end of the video and let me know if any of these really surprised you. Today's list isn't in any particular order. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Clayton, Missouri. Clayton, Missouri has a population of just a little over 16,000, and their crime rate is 34% lower than the national average. St. Louis has some really rough areas with astronomically high crime rates. It's pretty good that Clayton's pulling it off 34% lower. If you want to buy a home here, homes start around $500,000 and go well up over $2 million. Condos and townhomes start off around $250,000 and work their way up into the 800,000s for the really nice ones. When it comes to rental prices in cities, it's really hard to kind of get an average. So we're just gonna look at the median. Median is not the average. It kind of means the number in the middle and it's about 17% higher than the national average. If you decide you wanna live here, keep in mind the median household income here is a little over $91,000 a year. Number nine, Grandview Heights, Ohio. Grandview Heights, or simply Grandview, is a city in the Columbus, Ohio metro area. It sits just northwest of downtown Columbus on the Scioto River in case you wanna grab some smallmouth bass. If you wanna see some video on that, go check out Weird Beard Fishing. The guy's pretty entertaining. He's got a few videos on the Scioto River. Grandview has a population of just over 7,000 residents and homes here start off around 700,000. Condos, they start off around 450 and go up over $650,000. Their crime rate is 16% lower than the national average. And the median household income here is $99,806 a year almost 100K. This is not a bad place to live at all. Columbus really, of all the metro areas in Ohio, is the best one, so it makes sense this one's a little expensive. But don't worry, there is one from Cleveland on this list, and it is truly a diamond in the rough. If you wanna rent a place in Grandview, their rent tends to be about 15% higher than the national average. Number eight, Fairfax, Virginia. Fairfax sits about 30 minutes west of Washington, D.C. in that whole Alexandria, Arlington metro area. If you make a lot of money and you like golf, this is a great place to live. We just talked about this on a recent video that most people that make a good amount of money that work in Washington, D.C. actually live in this area of Northern Virginia. And Fairfax is a great place to live. They have a population of just over 24,000 and a crime rate that's 70% lower than the national average, which is outstanding when you consider they're right across the Potomac from Washington, D.C., which has horrible crime. Now, when a place is good, it costs a lot of money. Homes here start around $675,000. A condo or a townhome, that might start around $450,000 if you're lucky, and both those go way up. The median household income in Fairfax, Virginia is $149,000. Number seven, Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. Whitefish Bay sits about 15 minutes north of Milwaukee. Wisconsin really doesn't have much crime, so this shouldn't be a surprise that Whitefish Bay has really low crime. Milwaukee is the only place in Wisconsin that has any real crime. And just 15 minutes up the shore, you have Whitefish Bay that really doesn't seem to get any residual crime. Whitefish Bay was actually mentioned in the Gordon Lightfoot song, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. The line goes, the searchers all said they'd have made Whitefish Bay if they'd put 15 more miles behind her. Great song and great town. They have a population of 14,000 and a crime rate that's 55% lower than the national average. It's not terribly expensive compared to the other places on this list when it comes to housing. Homes start here around $450,000 and they're decent. They're livable and ready to go. If you want a condo or a townhome, those start around 200,000, work their way up. Rent here is only 3% higher than the national average. Not bad. The median household income in Whitefish Bay is $106,000. Number six, Prairie Village, Kansas. 
Prairie Village is known as a first tier suburban city. It is right next to another really great suburb that we've talked about before called Overland Park. It's like right next door. Kansas City itself has got some crime and it's got some poverty issues, but Prairie Village and Overland Park are really nice places to live. I'd say two of the nicer places to live in the country. Compared to a lot of the other suburbs around here, Prairie Village is a little more densely populated with houses and people. They don't have as big a lots, but it's still a really nice place to live. They get ranked A for everything but cost of living. Their employment, housing, schools are outstanding. They have about 22,000 residents, and they have a crime rate that's 52% lower than the national average. Real estate isn't crazy for such a nice place. You can occasionally find a home for around $220,000, but most homes and most of the ones you're going to want to be looking at are about $400,000 on up. They don't really have many condos or apartments or townhomes or anything like that. They have two for sale right now and they go for over 500,000. They look nice. The median household income here is about $84,000. I get emails and questions every single day on where someone should live. If they tell me the Midwest, I usually suggest Overland Park and Prairie Village. Number five, Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Technically, it's the village of Buffalo Grove. This is a village in Lake and Cook County, Illinois. It's a suburb of Chicago, and it lies about 30 miles northwest of downtown Chicago. With no traffic, that's about a 41-minute drive. Vince Vaughn was raised in Buffalo Grove. He was born in Minneapolis, but he moved here when he was young and went to school here. Buffalo Grove has a population of about 42,000 residents and a crime rate that is 69% lower than the national average. If you want to buy a home in Buffalo Grove, it's not terrible, especially for being in a metro area that's known as an expensive place to live. Most affordable homes are going to start off around $300,000 and work their way up. You could find some occasionally that are cheaper than that, $275,000, $250,000, but for the most part, you're looking at $300,000 on up. Condos and townhomes, you could find those as low as, let's say, 110000 to 200000 And of course, you can find some really nice ones in this area that are a little more than that. Now, all of you that hear about how Chicago is just this nightmare and people are getting killed left and right, that's what they tell you on the news. And it's bad. It's not as bad as they make it sound. But one thing you have to keep in mind, most of that bad stuff is going on on the south side of Chicago. Chicago has its north and its south side. You got the loop, which is kind of the center, and then you got the South side, nightmare, stay away from there. The north side is pleasant and nice. Sure, you could find little pockets around the loop and on the north side that are kind of bad, but nothing compared to the south side of Chicago. If you want to rent here, rent's a little out of proportion. It's actually 45% higher than the national average. The homes are affordable, renting not so much. Number four. Troy, Michigan. That's right, I said Troy, Michigan, close your mouth. Troy is a suburb on the north side of the Detroit metro area. It's located about 16 miles north of downtown Detroit. And unlike most of Detroit suburbs, this one doesn't have a whole bunch of vacant lots where the city actually had to tear down homes. The earliest recorded purchases of land in what was known as Troy Township occurred in 1819. So this one's been around a while. It was named Troy after Troy, New York. A lot of Michigan's early settlers were from New York. One of my earliest videos was about Detroit, and it's, you know, like five years old. And we talked about how bad Detroit is. Detroit's done a major turnaround. They've got a long way to go, but they're doing a lot better. They still have a lot of neighborhoods with a ton of boarded up homes and missing homes. Yeah, like I was saying, the city actually got to a point where they were just going through and mowing down abandoned homes, which they had a lot of because homeless people were living in there. People were just setting them on fire for fun. All kinds of stupid stuff. So if you drive down some of these neighborhoods, you'll just see house, house, vacant lot, vacant lot, vacant lot, house, vacant lot, vacant lot. That's how the blocks look. Troy has never been like that. Troy, Michigan has a population of almost 90,000. It's like 87,000 right now. And they have a crime rate that's 59% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. If you want to buy a home here, the real estate market's all over the place in this town. I mean, it's got something for almost everyone's budget, starting off around $189,000 for something that is decent and livable all the way up to $2 million. Most really nice homes that aren't going to need any work are going to be around 300 to 400,000 on up. Renting kind of blows here. It's 35% higher than the national average. They don't have a lot of rentals either. The median household income in Troy, Michigan is $93,017. 
Number three, Exton, Lionville, Pennsylvania. These are two different places, but they're kind of the same. They are both census designated places in the Philadelphia metro area, about 30 minutes west of Center City, Philadelphia. Philadelphia has a lot to offer people. It's got some dangerous areas, but it is a beautiful and very historic city. And in my opinion, it's a great place to live just outside of. Combined, Exton, Lionville has a population of about 12,000 residents, and they have a crime rate that's about 70 75% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. If you want to buy a home here, a nice one's going to start off somewhere around $325,000. Realistically, though, you want to be ready to spend about four, four hundred fifty dollars to get a really nice place. I like this part of Pennsylvania. I really like the rural areas of Pennsylvania, and the Lionville Exton area is right on the edge of the rural parts. If you're looking to rent here, rent is about 38% above the national average. The median household income in Lionville, Exton is $107,000. Number two, Happy Valley, Oregon. Happy Valley is a suburb of Portland, Oregon, and it sits about 25 minutes southeast of downtown Portland. I know this place really well. I love it. It is a great place to live. And I know a lot of your ears perked up because it's Portland, Oregon. Like Chicago and Detroit, all you hear is the negative stuff. And when they present it to you on the news or whatever, they make it sound like the entire city is just in flames and there's a war going on there. It's not really a thing. Portland, oddly enough, I've been down there the last couple of weeks. They're cleaning up a lot of the homeless downtown. I don't know where they're going, but they're definitely not as many tents on the street as there was a year, year and a half ago. I'd say it's down over half. They don't have any of that in Happy Valley. Happy Valley is a nice place to live. Happy Valley, like I said, is on the southeast side of Portland, right about where it starts getting rural again. You got to go through Damascus and then it gets really beautiful, rural, a lot of farmland. It's really nice out there. Almost 7,000 people call Happy Valley home. The median household income in Happy Valley is $106,000. And if you want to get a home in Happy Valley, buckle up. It's a little pricey these days. Portland's seen a serious jump in their home prices in the last three years. And Happy Valley really seems like it's taken it in the pants pretty hard. If you're lucky, you can find a nice home here for around $400,000. Realistically, you're looking at $600,000 on up, with the majority of the homes being between $750,000 and $850,000. They do have some condos, not a whole bunch, but there are some there. And they run about $270,000 to $300,000. Happy Valley's crime rate is about 47% below the national average, and it's trending in the right direction. Three years ago, their crime rate was only 35% lower than the national average. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. We'd love it if you went over there and subscribed. Also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so and give this video a big thumbs up. All right, on to number one. And number one, Shaker Heights, Ohio. Yes, I said Shaker Heights, Ohio. If you know the area, you know it's really nice. When I tell you where it is, you might be skeptical. It's in the Cleveland metro area. But Shaker Heights is a city in Cuyahoga County, Ohio. As of the 2020 census, the city's population is just about 30,000 residents. And if you live here, you got some money. And if you don't know, you got to have money to live here. Even without looking at the numbers, you just got to look at the map. If you see more than one golf course in an area, you know it's going to be expensive. They have five in the immediate area. But in a bizarre twist, they do have affordable homes in some parts of Shaker Heights. It's not all just, you know, living on the golf course type property. On the southwest side of Shaker Heights, they have some more affordable places. You can get condos and things like that for about $150,000. Homes in that area will start off a little over $220,000. But if you want to get something decent around here, you're going to be looking over $400,000. And they have some homes that are two and three million dollars. So they have a variety and probably something for just about any budget. Rent is only about 5% higher than the national average. Now all that, and they're still doing really good with their crime rate. It's 60% lower than the national average. The median household income in Shaker Heights is about $83,000. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.